Good morning, Venice, Northport, Inglewood, Nokomis, and surrounding South County areas. This is Francesco Abruzzino bringing you the Venice Scoop for today, the 7th of January. Get an early start so that I can hit a dawn patrol and freeze my butt off out in the surf. So, um, lots of news to cover, especially with the Northport and City of Venice meeting yesterday. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, as usual, I wanted to start with our sponsor, which today is YardCorps.com. Um, they bring you, they use American-made equipment, only American workers, and they specialize in residential lawn maintenance and deed-restricted areas. If you're interested in their services, give them a call at 941-445-3027 or info at YardCorps.com. They... Uh, Owner is also has an aquatic business, so if you call there and get an aquatic voicemail, don't worry, it's the same company. They're offering one month free on a 12-month agreement to anybody that signs up through this Facebook page, yardcorps.com. If you're interested in getting your business sponsored, just shoot me an email at fabrazino at yahoo.com or give me a call or contact me on any of my Facebook pages. Um, let's see, right now we got a couple stories. This one's impacting the county in a fury of year end deals, hints of a strong 2014 for building. I know most of the people on the page are not for all the building that's going on, especially with the amount of vacancies in the area. Um, I'm not sure if this is the same property that they just petitioned to have 140. No, because that was, okay, we had the 141 acres petition to build on that, and now we have this one. For some reason, I'm thinking I re already reported on it. There have been a lot of new building purchases at Ellen Anderson. Um, some builders are looking not just at 2013, but beyond, and a slew of, of last year deals was led by Vanguard land founder John Peskin. He sold off 20 acres of Jack Randall Boulevard in Venice for $2.83 million. Um, they're not sure what's going to happen with that yet, but basically, this strikes a chord along with a lot of people that are living east um, down Venice Avenue. They don't want all this urban sprawl. That's why they moved out there. Um, a lot of them are saying, look, you got all these houses. You got a ton of new ones that are already coming up. Let's get rid of those first. Um, I don't think it's going to stop these home builders. They're pretty much. Uh, focused on building out so all right Northport Venice pledged to work together <laughs> this sort of made me laugh because they said they're gonna pull their political clout and make things happen I'm not sure that we have a lot of political clout um, combined but we'll see what happens some of the platforms they want to take on are lower county taxes um, they like John Hall Mayor Hollick's idea that we're paying for services in the county that we're not receiving, such as the sheriff's office patrols. So that uh, little fight with the sheriff's office is now extending south to our neighbor. On the South County Jail Annex, which was closed the last Thursday by Sheriff Knight, the City of Northport and Venice City Managers and Police Chiefs are looking into whether the police departments can work together and jointly run the jail and then, um, you know, help each other transport up to Sarasota without relying on the Sheriff's Office. The swimming pool. Northport High has wanted a swimming pool. Um, they say they need it for major tournaments. And um, Blutcher asks Venice to support their, um, them as they strive for this from the county. Ed Lavelle, the city manager for Venice, said we do need a tournament size pool in the region. It's going to cost a lot of money. I'm not sure what kind of revenue dollars it would bring in. So that's something we can look at. I know it's something that many of the Northport residents want, but the city um, isn't ready to go in that direction yet without some financial support from the county, which means us, the Venice residents, means the Nokomis, the Inglewood, the Sarasota, and I don't know if there's going to be enough political will to get that through. Water quality. Um, both cities' stormwater engineers are comparing priorities and suggest that what the municipals can do is enhance and protect the water quality. Cook said she does not want what happened in the Indian River, River Lagoon on the East Coast that happened here with unprecedented algae blooms, killing off marine life and seagrass. Festivals work jointly to advertise and market each other's festivals, which, you know, is always a good idea. I thought they would have been doing that. Um, 
I do it on this page and I probably have more of a reach than the two cities do. Biking and hiking, I th covered this yesterday on my um, report. They want to, it looks like they want to strive to become a gold level um, biking community similar to Venice and they're talking about what they can do to get that done. I did post a email from an individual that said, hey look, we're all about making cities more bike friendly, but we raise our own revenues, our own resources of funding, which is great. Um, unfortunately, I don't see that with the way Venice is going, um, the county's going, or Northport. So I like what he was saying with SCORE, so maybe we need to get them more involved and um, make it more of a fun where they go out and get their own funding and create these advantages for the bikers. Uh, Wi-Fi. Lavelle and Northport City Manager Jonathan Lewis want to look at the possibilities to make South County um, Wi-Fi have a network surrounding the whole South County. That's a lot of money. I don't think they realize how much that'll cost. And um, it, it's a great idea for a lot of the families that can't afford internet because this is an internet-based society. I just don't know if the political, um, if they were going to have the political strength to get that done with all the financial financial requirements it's going to um, need. Okay, over to uh, the Gandal. This is a search. For, it's a silver alert on William Sullivan. He lives in Mission Valley. He left his home on Sunday, two thirty, to go shopping, and he never returned. Um, as far as I know, he's still out there somewhere. He's driving a 2005 red four-door Buick LaCrosse. Um, the Florida plate is 1614JE. Anybody with information, they ask to call 941-316-1201. And there's a picture of the individual. Uh, let's see. Shelters. The shelters were being open last night, and it's pretty chilly out there. They'll probably be open again tonight, I'm assuming. Um, I haven't heard anything yet. And let's see, the shelters are, I mean, obviously it's too late today, but in case it happens tomorrow, the Salvation Center of Hope on 10th Street in Sarasota, the Center of Hope Church here on Venice Avenue, Inglewood, the St. David Episcopal Church on 401 South Broadway, and with Northport, it's the New Hope Community Church. So um, they said all pets should be left outside during the should not be left outside during the cold weather. I was going to get left outside. Um, if you need, if you're a citizen and you need to be outside overnight or during the early morning hours, they're encouraging you to dress warm in layers. Um, so I think it's supposed to be chilly again tonight. So we'll probably see them open again. This is an article, uh, this is an individual that our own um, Dennis Weaver, who owns a local Bell Bonds company, After Hours Bell Bonds, um, picked up Martin, Go picked up this individual, um, Mark Martin. He was down here on a warrant, um, open warrant to up in, I think it's up in Michigan. Yeah, Bay City, Michigan. Um, so they picked him up, transported him back up there, and the guy's been caught. And returned to Michigan. He had jumped his bell in Bay County, and they tracked him down here. So, good job, Dennis Weaver. He's a uh, Venice High School graduate. I went to high school with him. Good guy. If you're ever in trouble, give him a call. <laughs> He'll help you out. Um, I'm putting this picture up there. It's a, from Kim Cott. She's uh, she her kid, two kids go over to Venice High School, and I think she's working security over there. And she snapped this picture. That's the Venice High School parking lot from the admin building. Putting it up there, it, it had 651 likes, 457 shares. So Kim Cott, people really loved her picture. It is a neat picture of a cold front coming in yesterday, which brought us some chilly weather. Um, this is on Lamarck in Elementary. They're having the school board meeting today at 7 o'clock up in um, at their offices at the Landings Boulevard. And they're urging everybody to go out there. And you had Charles Hummer, who is an advocate for doing something about the air quality issues, pass out 300 flyers yesterday to the parents. Um, many parents expressed concerns and also said they were going to the school board meeting. They have two law firms representing them, one in Sarasota, one in Tampa now. And this is, I, I went on my show last night and on the newscast saying, look, if they would have reacted properly, if they would have um, been proactive, they could have avoided all this stuff. But what they decided to do was just brush it to the side and dismiss 
um, the issue, the air quality issue, the Charles Homer, um, myself, this media outlet, and many of the parents and staff members. Um, so that's an interesting story. You can read it on the Northport Scoop I just posted from Charles Homer on w the approach basically and what's been happening. And uh, it should be an interesting school board meeting tonight at 7. Hopefully many of the Northport parents could, can make it there. I, I still advocate that the, the superintendent and the school board should be down in Northport discussing the issue, not doing a phone conference down there. And, the, and, and this isn't a meeting just for Lamarck Elementary. This is a monthly meeting where they're hoping to speak. Last time I think they were given three minutes each and um, they felt that they were not given enough time or um, people were just not paying enough attention to them. Haven't heard anything from the county commissioners, haven't really heard anything from the city commissioners in Northport on this issue. Um, environmental damage claimed in Warm Mineral Springs. I did this on my report yesterday, my live report. Basically, um, they're saying that the county and city that paid 5.5 million for this property brought in a bunch of sand. They didn't do it appropriately. They did not get the permits and now it's caused um, damage. Um, environmental damage to the uh, to the property and they want it all fixed up so we're looking at more money going out of our pockets to fix that on a place that's just basically sitting there idle right now uh, let's see the next thing uh, okay next is weather I guess that's it for our news and I look Look, I'm not prepared. There we go. I tell you what, that's what you get for doing a 5 in the morning newscast. Um, John Scousey, just love saying his name, um, says it's going to be a high of 53 today and a low of 36 tomorrow with a high of 69 tomorrow. So we're going to get back hot. You can see Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's going to be in the 80s. That's going to be beautiful out and sunny. So we're going to be back to that sunny weather. Um, there's going to be some rain on Thursday, but I tell you what, today and tomorrow, it's going to be a little chilly, 53, and then tomorrow, not bad, 69. Uh, winds are north, 20 to 25 knots with seas 4 to 6 foot. Um, probably looking at some surf over at the south jetty, high tide at 440. Um, so I'd say dawn patrol looks pretty good because low tide's at 1128. Um, so catch an early morning dawn patrol, I'd say go back around 2 and probably catch some better surf depending on the winds. Sports, five area players make the AP All-State first team. Unfortunately, none of them were any of our local fellows. Um, we did have some make the second team, though, and that was uh, Venice OL Tyler Guthrie and R RB running back Tyler or Terry Polk. A little surprised by that because Terry Polk has just done outstanding this year. I was surprised to see him on the second team. And that story is on the Venice scoop. Um... Sorry about that. All right, area teams shine at duels, and this is a story I put up on um, yesterday. It's for wrestling. I put it up early, late yesterday, missed the morning report, and it basically covered um, how we did. I think I think we were six and three for Venice. I say we Venice. Now the Indians finished fourth with six and three record, while Lemon Bay, Palmetto, and Southeast tied for fifth place. Um, Venice High, C.J. Tremel is 8-1, Bo Williams 7-2, Zach Kelly 5-2, all had a successful weekend. And Lemon Bay's Ryan Dodge is 9-0, Jack Lip 8-1, Dominic Schofield 7-1, Bobby Kasplich 7-2, um, also had fine showings. I would think so, 9-0, um, Ryan Dodge, I would think that's a great showing there. So, um, good job there on the wrestling team as a former VHI, VH. S wrestler. I always like covering that sport. This is from uh, Miss Venice Northport. They wanted everyone to know that they're holding personal signups this Saturday at 11, the 11th and the 18th from 10 to 2. If uh, you want to register new players, bring a copy of the birth certificate so they can put it on file. For more information, you can go to northportfestpitch.com. Check them out. Um... This was this should have been moved up before sports. I'm not sure why I put it there. And the city is recommending backflow freeze protection. And they basically went through what you can do to protect your backflow. And this story should also go down to Venice and Inglewood and anywhere else where you're going to have some code 
water issues or cold weather issues. Um, it tells you basically, you know, do not remove, remove the pipe insulation until the temperature rises above 32 degrees. And they just give you a breakdown of everything on there. That's on the Northport Scoop page, and it's from the Northport Sun. Okay, this next one is just a, um, a quick snippet of my live show. Basically, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, stri- gonna to strive to do the live show every night at 6 o'clock. People can call in. I'll give a calling number. I'm changing it because I'm trying to do this one system here with a magic jack. Um, and you can voice your concerns. You could say, hey, you're a jerk or whatever. I'm not sure how many people watched it live. Um, and the pre-recording it looks like it had 49 views since last night. And I've sort of hidden it. Um, I put out that it's live via this newscast um, and on my personal page and then it goes on this YouTube. I haven't really done a mass broadcast because I'm trying to fine tune it. Um, So there you have it. Here's a quick snippet of it. Hold on. And they said, hey, look, we got to re- re- rework this. We can't go with this contract. All right, there you go. Basically, it's a live show, and you call in. I'm going to cover some international, national. Um, try to focus primarily on state, county, and city. Um, Try to target an hour-long show. It could be two hours, could be three hours. Obviously, calling in is going to make make it a success and make it go longer. So hopefully, we'll get some good call-in um, commentary. I'm sure we'll get some people that are just uh, yahoos and get on there just to hear their hear, hear their voice and become uh, YouTube famous on YouTube and Facebook. Um, so basically, that's the gist of it. So check that show out. And remember, yardcorps.com. One month free on a 12 month agreement may be worth giving them a call. Yardcorps.com. Okay, so that's your show for today um, or your newscast. Um, remember, the Francesco Albertino live show should be tonight at 6. Um, I'll put out the call in number then. It's going to be changing a couple times. Uh, for now, I've finished up all my work and I think I'm going to go ahead and get ready to catch some surf at Dawn Patrol. It's 7 o'clock high. So wish me luck out there. I'm sure I'll freeze to death. For Francesco Abrazino and the Vintage Scoop, Child Tutti.